Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Susie Hall with the Cornerstone Collective and joining me today is Christian Heiner of Staff Rock Group. They are an amazing landscape architecture firm. Uh, Christian, thank you for joining me. Oh, go on, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We've known each other for quite a while and been involved in projects and various organizations together. And we're so thrilled to have you guys as part of our collective. So would you go ahead and uh, just tell our viewers a little bit more about your group and a little bit about yourself? Sure, yeah, yeah. Thanks again for having me. This is, uh, like we were kind of talking about a few minutes ago, I think that the, the collective you put together and the way you're kind of approaching this thing is, is, is super cool. And I, I mean, I totally see a need for the marketplace. Uh, and and I'm, I'm super happy and proud of you for, for jumping on it and making it happen. So so thanks for thanks for involving us. Of course. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, like Susie said, my name is Christian Heiner. I am one of the co-founders of Stackrout Group. Um, Stackrout Group is a landscape architecture firm. We're based here in Boise, Idaho. We have an office in Salt Lake City and we design sustainable high-performing landscapes all over the country. Uh, I mean, currently right now from Seattle to Miami, Florida and a lot of places in between. That's great. And how long have you guys been around? So it's kind of crazy. We're coming up uh, this spring, uh, you know, first part of June is nine years of Stackrout Group. Wow. And you look like you're Which, 19. You look like you're 19 today. So <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nine years is, is, is crazy. I mean, I, I don't remember my life before it. And I mean, yeah, yeah. How, how fast the nine years has gone. It feels like we started yesterday sometimes. That's so awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so what, what drives Stackrock Group to do the work they do and when you are working in your projects and with clients and developers and owners, what, what, what's kind of that driving force in your work, if you will? Sure. I mean, for us, and, and, and it's kind of, it's really, it's literally been this way since day one, the driving force is getting to work with people. Like we're, we are people, people getting to work with cool owners, cool architects, cool interior designers who are, who are doing cool projects with cool people. I mean, that's, that's what drives us just, I mean, the, you know, the projects are awesome and, you know, design is, is, you know, kind of its own, you know, its own thing, but it, but it's, it's working with cool people. That's, that's what drives us every single day. Yeah. It makes it fun too. Most of the time. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Way more often than uh, Yeah. Yeah. We're super lucky. I mean, just like you we get to work with our friends and, you know, do cool stuff. Like it, it, we, I pinch myself every day that this is, this is my life and what I get to do. Uh, isn't that awesome? So yeah. tell, us, tell us a little bit more about your design process and some of the technology that you use um, to create sure. those, those fabulous renderings and plans to help people really visualize um, what not only the outdoor space is going to look like, but also how it connects right to the buildings and the indoor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we've, we, you know, we are a landscape architecture firm. I mean, that, that's our business, but we, we talk about all the time that we're a technology company. I mean, we, you know, from, from the day we started, we have invested in and found and sought out the best design top, you know, software technologies. Uh, it, it doesn't even matter what it is. I mean, if, if designing stuff on the back of a roofing shingle like makes the most sense and that's the, what we need to do, we'll do it. Like, <laughs> so we're always looking for, you know, the next best, you know, coolest, you know, coolest tool. Um, you know, as far as design, I mean, our, our process is really over nine years. I mean, we've really dialed in and really have, we have a pretty stringent design process now. Um, you know, just, I mean, starting 30,000 feet and drilling down to the details, because as, as you are well aware, if you start with the details and get too wrapped up on, you know, colors or for us plants or materials or whatever way too early, it, it just it sidetracks the whole thing and becomes, you know, counterproductive for everybody. So we, we always will start at that, like I said, 30,000 feet and, and, and just continue to drill down until we have yeah, all the specs and, and, and everything like that. Um, you know, we, we, we use CAD, you know, good, good old fashioned CAD a lot, um, you know, cause we work with a lot of engineers and architects and that's kind of the, the one thing that, you know, really brings everything together. Um, you know, as far as, you know, 3d modeling and all that, um, you know, SketchUp is kind of our go-to, um, and has been for a long time, but we, you know, we use Revit when we need to, depending on who we're working with. Uh, we have a number of different rendering tools, you know, you know, Lumion is sort of our our go-to with rendering. We have a bunch of different plugins and different ones we can use, you know, when we're rendering projects and, you know, producing content and videos and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's amazing. Isn't it great to have all those tools uh, well, absolutely. In, your, in your toolkit? Absolutely. And it's also great having a team that knows how to use them. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a marketing guy, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, and I, it's funny, I, I own a landscape architecture firm. I've never opened CAD and I hope to God I never have to. <laughs> that wouldn't be good for anybody. Oh, that's awesome. I used to do CAD and I'm the same way now. It's like, nope, don't even want to, don't even want to open the program. And, but nope. those, there are geniuses that, that use all that technology and it's oh, just oh, amazing. 
Ab it's absolutely. Amazing the output. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a quick qu question that came up in a conversation this morning um, with a builder is, do you guys incorporate ever artificial plants in your outdoor landscapes or is it always, always uh, natural living? It was just you know, we, I a mean, maintenance question, you know, like hard oh, to sure. reach places, that sort of thing. I mean, we, we, we've done a lot of artificial turf you know, turf, you know, turf, mm -hmm. um, like that. But I, I don't remember ever a time finding or, you know, trying to find like fake plants outside. I mean, we could, could we do it? Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, that's never been a thing that's come up. But I mean, that being said, we, you know, with cultured stone for pavers and other stuff, we do use a lot of, you know, specify and work with a lot of, um, you know, cultured manufactured products, you know, not everything is, you know, grown or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, what sometimes surprises owners and clients about landscape architecture and your process? There, there's a few things. Sometimes they're surprised that, oh, we need a landscape plan for this. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a thing that happens a lot. Um, you know, a lot of times when we're working with, you know, e even architects who've done a lot of projects and, you know, we end up getting involved, you know, through them or through the owner or how, you know, however it comes together. A lot of times folks are, are surprised by how, how much we really know more, you know, I mean, for everything to work together, it's got to work together, you know, and all the designers and pieces parts have to work together. Folks, a lot of times are really surprised by how much about, you know, actual building architecture that we know and understand, you know, from being in this, is in this industry, in this business, as long as we have, of course, we have to know that stuff. And, the, and they're so surprised when we, you know, have the ability, you know, to talk with architects and really integrate everything and, you know, create these really cool, special indoor, outdoor areas, you know, that, that right now everybody wants, which, which is awesome. Oh yeah, I bet your guys' business has picked up quite a bit with this. Oh my gosh, yeah. with the last year, we, I mean, we've probably done, I don't, I don't have the numbers in front of me or whatever, but I mean, we've probably done more residential projects this year than we probably did the last two combined, just because so many people are home, you know, working from home, we've designed really cool, you know, outdoor office spaces for folks who, you know, they're not going to the office anymore and they want a really cool, you know, outdoor area so that, you know, they're not sitting in the basement like me, you know, they're sitting outside, you know, working, working outside. We've designed so much cool outdoor spaces like that for folks this, you know, this last year. Oh, I bet. Wow. What's uh, if you could just pick one or the first one that comes to your mind, one of your favorite spaces or projects that you've designed and why? Oh, man, that's that that's tough. Um, <laughs> I mean, if I had to pick, you know, if, if I had to pick one, I would say the the Boise HP campus was 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 is really my favorite one that that project was the one that really you know, catapulted Stack Out Group, really put us sort of on that national stage, working for a big client like HP, um, designing and, you know, doing all the documentation, all the certification with the USGBC for the Sustainable Sites Initiative. Um, I mean, that was the one that, yeah, that's probably my favorite one, just because that put us on the national stage by, by doing that. Well, and it's beautiful too. I've seen it yeah. on their campus there and it's, yeah. it is beautiful. So. Yeah. Now, now that the state of Idaho owns it, it's changed quite a bit. They, the state <laughs> of Idaho, uh, you know, doesn't have quite the same vision as HP does. So they've, uh, they've changed some things and it's being maintained a little bit differently than we had intended, but, uh, but yeah, but it's still way more sustainable than it was, you know, a couple of years ago. So. Which is great. So on that yeah. topic, let's talk sustainability for a little sure. bit. Um, we've both been involved with USGBC for a long time. Obviously, mm -hmm. sustainability is is super important to both of us and our, yeah. our firms and our in our groups and our projects. Um, what sometimes? What are some of the stigmas that people come to you with, right? When when talking about sustainability um, and some of the hurdles that they that they see that maybe you're able to dispel. Sure. I mean, the, the, the first one that leaves my mind is, you know, whenever people think of sustainability and landscape, they think of zero scaping, which it's not even, it's not even zero scaping, it's zero scaping, um, <laughs> which, which, which we can talk about the definition of that or whatever. But so many people come to us, you know, think, yeah, we want to do this, you know, sustainably, but I don't want it to look like the desert. Cool. It doesn't have to look like the desert. Just because it's sustainable landscaping doesn't mean it's just rocks and cactuses. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of you know, native, adaptive native plants that we can use. There's a lot of different ways we design irrigation systems so it's not wasting water. Um, you know, and when you talk sustainability with landscape, it's not cutting out, you know, everything that's not native and just, and not using any water. It's using water really responsibly and having a really well-designed, really well-installed irrigation system that's not wasting water. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, there's so much there with sustainability that for us, a lot of times they, uh, people think it's way more expensive. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and just cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. But um, especially with this pandemic on the in interior, you know, just the health and wellness. Um, I just think sustainability and th third-party certification, you know, through LEED, through WELL, mm -hmm. 
I just, it's like, I tell people it's like taking a test and not having a teacher graded or a professor graded. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Telling yourself you got an A, right? But unless yeah. somebody actually grades your exam or reviews your project, you don't know for sure if you passed. Yeah. Or exactly. what score. And yeah, and we have people all the time that we, you know, we, we want to design to these lead standards or these sustainable site standards, but it's too expensive to do the certification. So we don't want to do that. You're going to go to all the trouble. And I mean, because it definitely is, it's, it's, it's an added expense for sure, you know, to do the certifications and all that stuff. But, but like I said, I mean, yeah, it's like taking a bunch of classes at Harvard, but not getting like a degree or whatever. Like if you're going to come that far and like go to Harvard, get the degree so you can show it off. Right, right, exactly. And it makes sense to have things verified and make sure they're working properly and make sure your Absolutely. HVAC and all your systems and your water, all of that. So Absolutely. Well, we, we well, can talk for hours the, about that. <laughs> oh, oh, 100%. Well, and especially, you know, here, here in Boise, Idaho, where there's so many companies and people moving from out of state, having that green certification is really important. I mean, I, I have a lot of friends in commercial real estate. And I mean, they're telling me that, yeah, we need to redesign some stuff here because this company won't come into our building unless it's certified somehow, some way as sustainable. Yeah. So, so yeah, so it's, it's, especially on the commercial side, yeah, it's becoming way more important to have, you know, to design to those standards and also get the certifications. Mm. Yep. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Um, so let's talk collaboration a little bit. So sure. as a, as a collective associate and, you know, having worked together previously, but now having it be in an official model, um, mm -hmm. what, what appeals to you about that? I mean, the, so we all know that, you know, working with the team is important. And, and sometimes sort of difficult, you know, when you get thrown in on projects with people you've never worked with, everybody works differently, you know, the, the, the roles and expectations aren't really defined yet. So developing the, you know, a team like this and moving forward, it's going to make everything super duper easy. Um, I mean, both, both on our side, on the design side and for the owner too. It's, you know, rolling through projects with the same team. And we have, we have, we have teams that we work with on projects all over the country. And, and yeah, the first one, you know, it's just kind of figuring out how everybody works and, you know, how it's going to work together. But the 30th one, it's, I mean, auto, it's on autopilot, it's automatic, everybody knows what they're doing, everybody knows how everybody else works, and it goes so smooth and so fast. And so, so like I said before, yeah, what, what you're doing with this, I think is really, really cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're excited to have you be part of it and, you know, disrupting the industry a little bit, right? It's, it's different yes. than the traditional design bid, build model. Absolutely. Um, but the speed to But it's always been done this way, Susie. Right, right. <laughs> so it must be it must be the best way. But the speed to market, I think, for owners, developers, clients, understand mm -hmm. understanding that and the ROI. The sooner yeah. you can get open, the sooner you can occupy, the sooner that you can open those rooms of the hotel, you start making money. You start earning that's, that absolutely. revenue. And it, over my my thirty year career, that's one of the reasons I I opened or started the collective is because. There's so many better ways to do it, and we can condense the design schedule by months. Sure, right? absolutely. And absolutely. we can do that, and then compress the construction schedule. It's just a win-win for everybody. So absolutely, and 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 that's and that's a great point. Kind of you know going back to what you you know had asked before is you know what's something that people are surprised by. I mean, sometimes they are surprised at the design time. It can it can take a while. And, and a lot of times it's not really on us, it's on them making decisions. Cause you know, when you're doing a big project, there's money and a lot of stuff involved. And there's a lot of, you know, important decisions to make and nobody, you know, a lot of folks just can't make that decision right now. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, so people sometimes are surprised how long it takes to really design stuff. And yeah, so doing it this way, you know, with, with, with a cohesive team working together, yeah, it's gonna compress that time a ton. Yeah, yep. And especially having somebody in, in the lead role, right? That speaks everybody's language, like we were talking sure. about before this call, Absolutely. really adds a lot of value to the owners um, For and sure. the clients as well. Absolutely. So uh, then shifting gears a little bit to the business side, um, how has your journey of entrepreneurship impacted your long term go go goals in life? And I love sure. this question because entrepreneurs, everyone has a different answer. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I come from a long line of, of entrepreneurs and marketing folks. And so doing what I do now is, is sort of second nature to me, um, you know, coming up, I, you know, I worked for other people for a long time and, you know, helped, you know, people build businesses and stuff. And, and I mean, doing it for me, for my family and, you know, with my friends was, was, was always the goal. And yeah, so nine, nine years ago, Will and I pulled the trigger and, and, and decided to do this. And um, I mean, yeah, we have the goal of, I mean, the reason that we have offices in Salt, you know, an office in Salt Lake and the reason that we do projects all over the country is because, I mean, as much as we love Boise and living here is great, Boise is what, like seven exits off the freeway. Like there's a whole, a whole big <laughs> world out there. And, and our goal is, is to, yeah, I mean, use Stack Rock Group to, you know, design cool spaces and also, you know, let us go and experience other cool places and, and, the, and the places that we've gone and, you know, the conferences we've been to, the clients we've met, you know, because of Stack Rock Group are people I would have never met otherwise. And, and so, I mean, that's always kind of been the goal is, is to just 
just build this thing and keep building it and see see where it goes. See where it goes. Yep, ride the waves. That's amazing. All right, last question for the day. Um, sure. What are you most looking forward to this year in 2021? <laughs> I am so looking forward to happy hour with my friends. I can't even tell you. <laughs> Ext extroverts like you and me are not made to be, you know, cooped up here in the basement working on Zoom by ourselves all day. Like I need to be with my friends. You know, I mean, I went from and just like you, it happened overnight. I mean, I went from literally lunch every single day, happy hour every single afternoon with a client, you know, future client, past client, friend, um, you know, somebody from our office or whatever. I mean, literally every day to now I haven't set foot in a restaurant in almost a year. And it, it, so, yeah, I'm the, the depths. I mean, I, I've never dealt with depression in my life, but mm -hmm. just being separated from everything like I've, I've dealt yeah. with that this year and it's, and it's been tough. Mm. And, and yeah, that's definitely what I'm looking forward to is being back out in in the world. Wow, that is that. Yep, that's so true. And I think so many people it resonates, you know, with them. And you and oh, I were totally. talking on the pre-call. We're we're seeing now more activity. Uh, I think more more signs of optimism. So yes. you and I are optimists. Let's make it happen. Let's hundred um, percent. Yeah, encourage people to you know design those those amazing outdoor spaces, which I've always been a fan of. You know that. Yeah, but, absolutely. You know, part of the magic of what we do um, with our two groups is that indoor outdoor connectivity. And absolutely. how does that how does that flow? And mm -hmm. you know, spaces that are well designed, they just flow. And yeah. yes, and you can't plans. always tell it's yes, well designed. You just yeah. walk in, you just walk in or walk out and wow, this is awesome. You don't know why it's awesome. Right. That's because it was designed to be awesome. Right. Yeah. You can't, you can't put your finger on it. And then, you know, sometimes people will be like, Oh, I didn't realize this, or I didn't realize yeah. that was there. This is really cool. There. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, yeah the and that's, magic. that's the magic of the design and what we do. Right. So absolutely. hundred percent. Well, I'm looking forward to having more amazing projects together and the one we were yeah. just talking about. And uh, thank you again, Christian, for joining us. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, this will be on our, it is on our YouTube channel. And please visit our website, thecornerstonecollective.net. And if you go to our collective associates page, you'll find Stack Rock Group under landscape architecture, and you can read more about them. But thank you again, Christian. You guys are amazing. Love working with you and appreciate you taking the time. Oh, Susie, thank you so much. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.